<laughs> Let me tell you a little bit about Bet Online. It remains your number one spot for NBA, MLB, MMA, boxing. It doesn't matter. Every single prop, every single play, every single point, it's all at Bet Online. When it comes to bets, when it comes to props, everything that you need is at your headquarters for sports betting. That's Bet Online. Head to the website right now, use your mobile device, sign up, get a 50, that's 50% welcome bonus. Don't forget to use the promo code. B L E A V, that's believe, to get yourself a 50% welcome bonus. Come on, there's no need to hesitate. Bet online where the game starts. I hope you're ready to have your mind blown with the greatest health and fitness information on the planet. <laughs> Well, hello there, everybody. I'm Michael D. Catherwood. This is the Mikey Likes You podcast, the greatest health and fitness podcast on the planet, according to me. Yo, if you are in search of a little bit of help to get out of a rut, to get back into things when it comes to health and fitness, when it comes to nutrition, when it comes to dieting, when it comes to getting shredded for summer, or if you've never really been into it, you're couch potato and you're like, you know what? Now's the time for me to do it. Well, I am available. Check out my Patreon. I will put a link in the profile so that you can check out all the three different tiers with all the three different things that I can do for you. What else? Oh yes, First Attachment makes the greatest health and fitness supplements on the planet, hands down. I'm not just saying that, man. I refused the affiliation of a lot of supplement companies in my two years of doing this podcast, a lot. But I was happy to join forces with First Attachment. There's a code for you, Mike10. I will also put the link in the profile with that code, but please, whether you're looking for a intro workout nutrition, I, I swear by their field rations and QRF, which is for your liver, which is something I've always struggled with as a pretty heavy drinker, alcoholic, and someone who takes pharmaceutical SSRIs and things, there was just crap going in my liver. And uh, QRF is the only thing on t coupled with a healthy diet and lifestyle that has helped my liver values. Um, there's a, a bunch of stuff there. The Go Pills, which is their fat burner. Um, everything is really thought out. Justin Harris, Tropin and Nutrition is behind every single product they put out and the guy is a wizard and there's a reason why they're making every single product they make. So go check it out. Link in the profile plus Mike10 is your code. And Bet Online has always been bringing you this podcast. So thank you to them and thank you to every one of you. Please like and subscribe. The percentage of people who actually listen or watch this podcast that are actual subscribers is low, which makes me feel like cool because people are noticing it all the time. But if you're watching, if you're liking, if you're enjoying it, uh, the audio only even, go ahead, hit that like, hit that subscribe. Help me to get by, to win the war with the machines. All right, a couple things that I really wanna talk about today. Um, not the normal fare, I don't think, cause it's not gonna be sets and reps and calories and protein, but it, it is absolutely based around health. And that is why I wanted to dive into them. First thing I wanted to talk about really badly was Jay Lynn Cheney, no relation to Dick, 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 Dick Cheney. She is a blogger. She goes by J Bay, J Bay Productions is her, is her thing. She's big on TikTok and she's a larger woman and she is really upset and is putting together a uh, petition to get air, all major airlines, the FAA actually, to make sure that all airlines are gonna reimburse or give free seats and accommodations to what she calls plus size people. Now she is not plus size. This is one of the many things I need to unpack. Did you know that more than 1 billion people in the world are plus size? That's roughly 13% of the population. Because words matter. They really do. And apparently to most people in media, both social and traditional media, it, they don't seem to matter anymore because you can call people Nazis just if you disagree with them. You can call people boomers if they're my age. And baby boomers, boomers mean something. Boomers were born after World War II. In other words, 35 years before I was born. Someone who disagrees with you or someone who doesn't think that Black Lives Matter uh, is necessarily all that pure with their intentions or someone who thinks that they're gonna vote for Trump, they're not Nazis. 
And someone who is 250 pounds overweight is not plus size. No one should have to endure the discomfort, embarrassment, and discrimination that often comes with being a plus size passenger trying to navigate air travel. I want to make it very clear. I have no desire to, to ridicule or put down this young woman, uh, Miss Cheney. I am a, 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 an adamant opponent to the idea of shaming people. I don't want to slut shame. I don't want to fat shame. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to do any of that. You know why? Because I don't like to judge people because I know where I've been and I know who I am. And I try hard to be a good dude, but I absolutely got on my hands and knees at people's houses who I did not know and looked around in shag carpet for flecks of crack rocks. And I would be totally willing to sell my body. And I totally would have drive, driven inebriated with children in the car. I absolutely would have done that. And I absolutely have been dishonest and, 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 and vengeful and horrible. Was a lot of it the drugs themselves? Yes. Was a lot of it just my motivation to have more drugs or to get drugs? Sure. But nonetheless, I, can't, I cannot sit here and judge people, and I certainly have no desire to shame them. But what I do want to point out is that this kind of stuff can get super dangerous when you take things beyond the level of equal rights or understanding or looking for sympathy for your situation in life. Because I want to have sympathy for people, be it minorities, be it women, be it uh, different religions that have been subjugated, who have been uh, oppressed, who have been uh, discriminated against. And I certainly think overweight people uh, fall into the category of being incredibly, incredibly discriminated against. And I'm sure it's a nightmare oftentimes to be overweight because of the way that society treats you. That being said, it is really dangerous to not only assume, but assert that because it's hard for you, that now the world should figure out different ways to accommodate you. My petition states, all plus size passengers should be provided with an additional seat or two or three, depending on their size and need. Airlines should also offer a straightforward refund process for those who are buying additional seats independently. This young lady is getting a petition signed so that the FAA mandates refunds for extra seats needed for people who are that large, just free seats in general. Let the other passengers pay. Make sure that other passengers get off the plane so that she and people of her size can have extra room to live and to deal with it. And yet, many airlines still don't have clear policies in place to accommodate plus size passengers. That's why I've started a petition calling on the FAA to require every airline to have a clear customer size policy in place for plus size passengers. That's crazy. That's insane. I had a buddy of mine. He ended up playing, I think he, 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 he signed some deals and he maybe had a cup of coffee with some NBA teams, but he didn't actually make it in the NBA. He might have sat the bench in you know, summer leagues, but, but he was that good at basketball and he was a big guy. Six foot seven, six foot eight, and well put together for that size. Um, and I flew with him once and it was a fucking nightmare for this poor guy. I'm 5'10", 180. I'm right on the money of average sized dudes as far as just build, right? I think the average man in America is 5'10". I'm 5'10", right on the dot, 70 inches, and I'm about 180 pounds. And uh, flying sucks for me unless someone else is going to pay for me to go first class, which is still pretty, you know, it's not like the bomb, but it's better. It's way better. I won't do it unless someone else pays for it. Flying sucks, okay? This guy, this guy, it was a fucking nightmare for him to fly. And he has no control over his height. He just came out the chute that way. And I understand if you're very overweight that it's probably pretty shitty to fly, that you don't have a lot of room. But as you point out in your piece. Did you know that more than 1 billion people in the world are plus size? That's roughly 13% of the population. 13% of the population. By the way, way no true, okay? I looked it up. The World Health Organization says that 13%, close to 1 billion people on the planet is overweight being so large that you might need two or three seats, 
That's close to what they would call morbidly obese. Morbid obesity, where a person's weight interferes with basic physical functions, equals 55 million adults worldwide. It's really far from a majority, but even if we're being kind and saying it is 13% of the population, which we have established it absolutely is not, what the hell business do we have making sure that 13% of the population can feel good about things? or have things a little bit easier when 87% of the population will then have to pay the price. Let's work together to make sure that the travel industry serves everyone, not just the select few. Again, no, even if we were going to be kind and allow you to use those statistics, I'm relatively sure 87 to 13, not a lot of balance there. By signing this petition, you can help us demand that airlines take concrete steps to make air travel more inclusive and accommodating for all passengers. Whether you're plus size or not, everybody deserves to be treated with dignity and respect when they fly. I have a friend of mine, he's a comic, a really good one. His name is Brad. He's a little person, Brad Williams. Many of you are familiar with him. He's very good. A comic has to travel around a lot. It's part of your job, going on the road. Because he's going on the road, he's staying in a lot of hotels. Every single hotel he goes to, it's a fucking disaster to try to use the toilet and to try to take a shower. Because he is an anomaly when it comes to a size of person. They design these things for the average Joe and the average gal. And I feel bad. Brad Williams is he's three and a half feet tall, four feet, I don't know how tall he is, but he's, he's short. He's a little person. And other little people have to deal with the fact that the shower head is four feet above their head. Okay? And that, I'm sure that sucks. But I don't think there's many little people out there that are like, all hotels just got to figure out a way to make it easier for me. And they didn't have any control over that. You absolutely do have control over your weight. I am super deeply sympathetic, and if you have not listened to me one bit, then don't even rush to judgment, because if you have, you know I'm deeply sympathetic to someone who is overweight, because I do think it's not all your fault, especially nowadays with these massive conglomerate companies that are just snipers at making highly palatable, calorie-dense food at an affordable price, and it makes it really difficult to kind of keep those calories under wrap. I, 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 get, I get that. It doesn't change the fact that it's fucking preventable. Right there on the World Health Organization, it'll say, obesity is preventable. And let's get to the fact that plus size means a little bit bigger than the average woman. Plus size, not, that, not in 1940. About 10 years ago, plus size was Christina Hendricks. You, my lady, are not plus size. Just like, and it has nothing to do with gender because there's plenty of guys out there that are like, dude, I've been rocking the dad bod. I was like, whoa. No, 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 no. Dad bod is like uh, capable, but not shredded. You know, you can go, go and turn a wrench and lift a TV because you're a dad, you're a man now, but you haven't been spending hours in the gym and eating egg whites. That's crazy. You're a dad. You got a life. Dad bod is not a big fat pile of shit. And plus size is not someone 150 pounds, 200 pounds overweight. I've said it before and I'll say it again because this is dangerous and it goes out to especially you younger people who are growing up in a world where this is your reality. But there's nothing more denigrating than lowering the standards for someone. If you're super concerned about the plight of black Americans, which is a, absolutely a legitimate thing, the worst thing you can do is just lower the standards for them because it's like, oh, are you, are you my developmentally disabled little brother? Do I need to let you win? Do I need to let you have a... That's what, that's what you do. Really kind athletes, really kind ones, people who have a heart. At the end of the season, if there is a developmentally disabled kid on a team, you, 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 I had it happen in my high school, you, you, you see it all, all over the internet. It's heartwarming and it's beautiful. That there's, there's one kid on the wrestling team or one kid on the basketball team who, who, who has literal disabilities, okay? And then every, the opposing team says, okay, it's two minutes left in the fourth quarter. And everyone gets out of the way and, and will even rebound and hit it back so the kid can hit a three-pointer. Or, you know, the wrestling, uh, wrestling match where the kid comes out and he has profound cerebral palsy or, or downstairs or something. And the, and the kid lies down on the mat and lets him pin him. That's, that's, that's 
it's character. That's what you do for someone who absolutely has no standing on the same level as you. That is not black Americans. That is not women. That is not Jews. That is not, it's something you do that if you do it to someone who does have the ability and the agency to stand on the same footing as you and you do it to them, it's the most big, it's the most giant fuck you there is. It's the most denigrating thing I can think of. I, I will never forget, I got in this massive argument on Loveline one day because they tried this thing where they needed to add a female voice, you know, and uh, they didn't really decide on quality of charisma, uh, eloquence, or <sighs> ability. <laughs> they just got women. And, they, and at the time, there was this host named Simone, Simone Bien. She's a nice enough lady. I don't, I don't have anything against her. But she is from this... She was very British and she was from a very old school mentality. And she asked me about like playing board games with my wife or like, you know, and I was like, I smashed my wife the other night at Trivial Pursuit. We were playing with her, my in-laws and my wife and I fucked them up. And she's like, you wouldn't let her win? I was like, what? Are you serious? She's like, yeah, what? Don't you ever let your wife win? I was like, no, I don't let my wife win. She's a grown woman. Why would I let her win? That's what I would do with my five-year-old daughter. I, I used to let Magnolia, my daughter, when she was five, I used to let her beat me in chess one out of three times because she was a child. I was like, are you serious? Do you really think that it's appropriate for a grown man to think so little of his wife that he would let her win? How about she just beats me because I am pretty sure that she could. She's like, no, no, it's kind. You have to let her. I was like, no, it's not fucking kind. It's really insulting. And for this woman to assume that all other passengers, all airlines, and then everything having to do with air travel, which, by the way, is a fucking luxury. This isn't basic human rights. You, you have to be fucking so lucky in the grand scheme of things. If we're going to use statistics of the earth, like you do with your distorted statistics for size, the people who have the ability to pay for a fucking commercial flight is infinitesimal. And you fucking hit the lottery and you have that ability. And you want people all over to be sympathetic to the fact that you don't fit in one seat. How about the fucking people who have to sit next to you who had nothing to do with this? I'm not trying to shit on this one girl. I think I'm shitting on this idea which is representative of all of it. It's the same thing the other day. I'm at the gym and I'm working out. And this guy is setting up to film himself. Okay? And he puts a tripod and he's filming himself training. And this girl, who also is a member of said gym, walks in between him and this camera. And he flipped out on her. And I was squatting, and I racked the bar, and I went over, I was like, hey, fuck. This isn't your private studio for filming. Last time I checked, this is a public gym where people pay money to fucking work out, and this girl did that. Okay, suck it up. You, this isn't, the world doesn't revolve around you, fuck boy. This guy was not happy, but he could see me dig, digging my heels in. And I was, I, I, was, I, I was angry at the time. I had other shit going on. Because I'm not Mr. Tough Guy. I'm not going to, but uh, he turned and said something to me. And I think he could sense that I was like willing to go to the mat literally on this one. Uh, and so he stopped filming because it means a lot to me. You, if you're a gamer, you get main, main characters, main players, and then there's the periphery. I forgot what they're called. There's a gaming term for that, like non-playable character, NPCs, right? Non-playable character. So there's all these people around, you know, in the role playing, but then there's the main character. There's the one you control in the first person, the one you decide to take control of. That's not reality. No one is that person in life. All other people are not NPCs for you to play your game, fuck. 
There was a time and a place where I could way die. Not be, I'm, this is not dramatic. This is not hyperbole. I could way fucking die if I didn't get a drink in my body. I would have a seizure, okay? Do I think I should make airlines give me free alcohol so I don't? I put myself in that fucking position. And yeah, it's a disease, and there's genetic components, and I had, there was a lot outside of my control, that, but there was a lot in my control that led to me being that profound of an addict. I had a friend who was a heroin addict, and by the grace of God, I never really liked opium. I never liked opiate-based shit. I did heroin, I did, but I was a stimulant guy, okay? And I really lucked out, because I don't think I would have been, I would have gotten clean uh, after the fourth or fifth try, I would have, it would have taken me longer because I, I, there was something about, I never really liked being down like that. I like to be fucking geeked up as you might be able to tell right now as I'm sweating balls, fucking talking a mile a minute, like I'm Tony Montana, but I was a stimulant guy. Okay. But I had a buddy, I had plenty of buddies that were junkies and uh, my buddies who was a junkie when, we, when I was living on the East coast had a friend die or excuse me. No, I was a family member die in Canada where he was from on the West coast of Canada. And he had to fly back. And he almost fucking went crazy on a plane because he couldn't can, can, can keep pinning himself. He was on this long flight from the New York tri-state area to back to the west coast of Canada. And he kept trying and he would do it. And be, but are we supposed to have heroin bathrooms for that guy too? Seriously. Are we supposed to have special lanes for you to film yourself at the gym? Make extra room there for all this dispensable real estate in popular cities in the U.S. of A. Fuck. One thing I've realized in having a farm and being really in touch with lots of different creatures, lots of different creatures that eat other creatures and hunt them or care for them, is that everyone has this idea, nature is so brutal. Nature's so brutal. Uh, <clears throat> nature's so brutal, or nature's so beautiful and and so nice. No, it isn't. It's neither. Nature's indifferent. The universe is fucking indifferent. It doesn't care if I have a chicken that attacks me every time I even go near the fucking shed where the eggs are, because I'm like, dude, you know I feed you every day, right? You know I'm not gonna steal your babies, but you still fly up into my chest and fuck me up with your claws every day. Or if I have a chicken that was my favorite in the world, I loved her, she was so sweet. She would come and sit on my lap for no reason. Nature doesn't give a shit. Because somehow the asshole rooster who claws me every day is still ticking, and the one that I loved every day went into a fucking coyote's belly. And nature doesn't care that Coyotes are terrible, horrible bully animals that only attack things that are defenseless. And that deer are super sweet. They are, they're really beautiful. They don't really fuck with my animals a lot. And I love seeing them run because I, every day I go out and I see a deer carcass just getting shredded apart by a fucking pack of vultures. It's just indifferent. And assuming that any facet of nature, even in this country, any facet of the universe, even in this country, which is based on your ability to find freedom and a pursuit of happiness, to, to, to assume that within that pursuit of happiness, other people have to suffer in some way is fucking extreme narcissism. So pull it together. I love you. In this crazy mixed up world, it makes you think that nobody cares. Remember, I do. Because